Thank you, sir. Sorry. Sorry. I hope you all forgive me. I hear the Dan. I got the Dan on my clock too. I put mine on mute, but I'm gonna be brief, inshallah. And uh, I'm the lot. What can I say, the brother? I have no criticism whatsoever for his language, because he said y'all heard him say he with family. And if y'all came in my house sometime and heard how I talked to my family, some of y'all might be mad, mad at me. So alhamdulillah. Excellent, excellent. Oh no. Now we can we this is the day of modern times. We can delete that one word. I, I, but we shouldn't. In my opinion, if it was up to me, I'd have to FCC or whatever for an apology. If I can apologize for that. But uh you hit the nail right on the head. And I know the schemes. I'm not I'm not uh I'm not naive. I know what they up to, what they plotting against, but they don't have light. They don't have nothing but corruption to move on. And uh, they're moving in the darkness. If you ever think of what, and they think they, if they can isolate individuals and attack individuals, that's the best they can do. And it's for self-satisfaction, it's not for progress, uh, because they, they know they can't hurt this community. And Allah is guiding and leading this community to the destiny to his destiny to where we are. And they can bear witness to every second in the past will testify to how we got here. And that is because of Allah's will. Yeah, uh, if you can think, I was thinking of, of Allah, about Allah's mercy on me as an individual. I said, if you can look back, and I know I'm not the only one to be grateful, and think of uh, when you were a young, innocent child, and think of the dreams of a child. Most people, once they reach a certain age in the real world, they open the door, that cold wind hit them in the real world, and the reality, the bright lights hit them, and they say, well, that little boy was silly. He was foolish. But no, if you're sincere, Allah will answer those dreams in ways that you would never imagine. Would you believe that there's nothing that I dreamt of as an innocent child that I have not seen Allah give me uh, many times over? more than I ever thought I ever would have or, or want or desire. Uh, I never wanted a, a, a mansion across the other side of that, this country or that country or in the south, one to visit in the south in the winter and the, and, the, and the home here. That ain't what I wished for when I was a child. I never even thought of even having a house. I have that and more, everything I've ever dreamed of. And um, if you sincere in your heart, Allah will show you what your soul is asking for. And one of the biggest and greatest things, burdens that uh, weighed on my heart and my mind was the injustice that existed in the world, good and evil. And I learned that at a very young age. Uh, I haven't heard my, I've heard some of my sons express uh, some social awareness of the condition of the human being and the human soul and this, uh, it's amazing when you see that, because you almost see like a light turning on. Say, this ain't a little boy no more, this is a young man, he, whether he know it or not. And, uh, and I wonder why there was such corruption and such evil in the world, and why people's hearts go this way. And I learned to know that we have a common enemy, it's Shaitan. You know, he whispers. And weak people, and weak men, and weak leaders, they listen to the whispers of Shaitan. Even Imams, that they think they follow him, the Quran or the son of Prophet Muhammad or whatever wisdom they may have gained, but really they're following a weaker nature of theirs. And they don't, they're incapable of walking upright like a man. So uh, Shaitan takes advantage of these weak men, you know, through the closest ones to them. It could be their they buddy, their comrade, their ma'am, their they haji partner, or it could be their wife, their spouse, or their children, or a beloved. A uh, person that's close to Imam Muhammad, the Imam's family, or something, be whispering, you know. I used to call it like a, uh, I used to use the analogy in my mind, just personal, just to keep a little humor, that they've been, they've been sipping out on, on that cup of poison that's passed around freely, you know. They don't kill them, but they, they lose their humanity. They walk around like little zombies, and you see them, we see them, but they're blind to the reality. They're blind, they blind to what's really going on in the world. That the mosque cares, hasn't missed a beat. And you can look at 
Allah, the reason why Allah blesses us, he created, he put everything in us. I think Imam just said that. Everything that we need to survive this world, human intellect. Human intellect allows us to have a vision to see the future, to see down the world. Uh, that's what your intellect is. Uh, otherwise, you're just reading the past. You have to, you read the future before you do anything. You remember Muhammad talked about driving a car. I don't know if a lot of us uh, really talk, thought about that. He said, because if you drive a car in the past or in the present, you already in an accident. <laughs> you have to drive in the future, right? So that's what we do. That's what Allah gives us in our nature. So uh, we have to stop relying on a condition that African American people have is just to submit and to trust others with our life, our, our futures, our, our aspirations and everything. You know, we can't just think, oh well, I love so and so, that's my neighbor, I'm gonna go on and trust. No, if he gave you a hint, if you smell a whip, if you're in your home laying in bed and you smell a match and you know you don't smoke and ain't supposed to be no matches in your house, you, if, if you don't get up invest and investigate, you may not get up that next morning. Your whole family may be dead because the fire be in your house. That's how life is. Allah always shows us. He shows us the future if we investigate. But if we don't want to investigate and look into things, then we're subject to suffer harm to ourselves uh, in many different ways, physical, spiritual, however. And so most of the harm that we suffer is our own fault for not using this great intellect that he gave only to this, his highest creature, the human being. The other creatures don't have it. The angels don't have it. The angels don't have what we have. They don't have the ability to predict the future and make the future what they want to have for the betterment of their own life and existence. Human beings have that. And many people uh, understand that, and they understand that about us, that, uh, uh, that we rather uh, follow than lead. So they take the place, and they, they lead us blindly, here and there, back and forth, to and fro, and we follow them, and we continue to make mistakes to set us back years and years, and sometimes set us back in decades in history. But we're blessed to have a, a community that's able to read Allah's signs and to be able to benefit and appreciate it. Uh, and it's evident in most of our personal lives. Most of us are extremely successful. But I have to agree with Imam 1000% that we're not making any progress, that we won't see the results, the good results we, we, we need until we focus more on community life. That our community, that our interest for ourselves should first and foremost be the foundation should be community. Your foundation. As an individual, uh, I remember Imam Muhammad, he uh, made, you know, uh, he brought it out uh, to be popular for us to accept that there's, there's uh, race pride, race pride. But he said the human identity should be the foundation. And if you have the foundation right, and if everything you do is for Allah's sake, then everything else, all your other relationships, uh, if your relationship with Allah, that's what I think is exactly what he said, if your relationship with Allah is correct, and uh, then all your other relationships will be as followed. They, your other relationships should be easily uh, handled. Um, uh, same thing with your identity. If you identify with the human family, then the, uh, first and foremost, I'm a human being. You should defend your human rights and your humanity before you defend your blackness or I'm um, from the whatever family, the Muhammad family or Abdullah or somebody, you know. You should defend your humanity first. Right. And then you should focus on your community locally. Where do you live? How's the environment that you live in? Is it on fire? Is it on going to hell and you there worrying about uh, Something else, some, somebody else across the water somewhere, you know, have to, we have to have our priorities straight. Yes. And it's, so, it's, such a, it's such a beautiful thing uh, to witness that uh, uh, we have this light, but we're still so greatly affected by this, uh, wouldn't, this is not beautiful, uh, what I'm thinking about now, the, uh, the effects of slavery, these plantation goals, and, and this type of mentality where we don't believe in ourselves as a people and don't believe in us 
as being capable of uh, leadership and uh, accepting one of our own as being having the ability to lead us is because we don't see God as our leader. We don't see that Allah is guiding and leading all of us through our own, very own creation. If we could see that and we could believe that as individuals, then Allah would not only guide us as individuals, he'll guide us as a people because we will see good leaders and like Imam said, we'll be able to identify the leadership for us for our future. And we'll be able to pass this knowledge on to our youth who are really just uh, set up right now to be food or laborers on the plantation worse off than the, uh, you know, I, you know people, somebody might say, well, how, how can you say somebody's worse off than plantation slavery? When you saw how they beat and whipped and, and murdered and destroyed them, physical bondage is not as bad as the slavery of the human soul and the human spirit. No. I struggled for years to understand why Imam Muhammad said that uh, he didn't believe in uh, uh, you know, teaching people, is, not teaching people Islam, sending Qurans into the prison system. You know those people are uh, desperate, they're human beings, they need help, they're not forgetting about. But he said, but the Quran is not intended to be uh, in an environment where the human soul cannot express itself. The human, the human being, the Quran is intended to liberate and free the human being and help the human being live, live out its potential. So you shouldn't be looking to convert people once they're in the jail, already in the jail, they're locked up. You should pray for them and hope they come out and teach them when they have, have an opportunity to express themselves, to express the fullness of, uh, of their humanity, you know? You can't express humanity in a cage. That's what we put animals in cages and corral them, tell them when to feed, when to sleep, and when to eat. So uh, freedom is what we should be looking for, for the human soul. And uh, Savior's Day is very appropriate. Imam Muhammad being our leader and leader and having the respect that he, he's gotten from uh, uh, people that have social conscious, believers from all around the world, Muslims, and uh, uh, just, just people in general. And the love, he, he respect he got. Um, yeah, Imam Muhammad, uh, lost my train of thought. Yeah, um, what was I saying before? Just a minute ago. Well, the, the, knowing the type of leader that we have, uh, he has prepared us for, uh, say, that's what my point was, Savior's Day. Just knowing the leader he was and for his beginning, he always respects his beginning in community life with Savior's Day. That's why I was looking for. It was important and sometimes if I get my thought off, off track, you know how it feels when you think you lost it, but when it's so important that uh, Allah bless you to come back to it. Save us day. This is, this is what this is about. In the minds and the heart of African American people, uh, all we had was this, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And a lot of the Christians in the world, the, in America, the African American Christians, they talk about Jesus more than they talk about God. I got a, a well, I, I don't want to, I have a conversation every now and then with a, with a Christian and I let them know every time. I said, I'm not in conflict with you. You believe, I think you're sincere. No desire to convert you or anything. But um, it's almost as if like it's a child game they play with me, you know, and they just want to get the last lick before they run out. And they always say, Jesus is God. Or something, something, I forget the exact words. And I just kind of shake my head. I said, was we debating on God or who God was or is not? I said, why do you have to? They, I don't know any Muslims from our community. I don't hear Muslims. Do y'all ask them to change their God, Christians? I don't understand it. But I know if something burdens my soul so much <laughs> that every time I see somebody, I have to mention it, that I would, ref I would look back and, and, and try to deal with that problem I got, you know, if it's a problem. Uh, but, uh, you know, we, we Muslims, we don't tell people how to reach God, you know, how to get faith. That, that Allah is the one that converts, you know. Uh, so, alhamdulillah. But it's, it's important uh, to me
to keep Savior's Day going because Imam Muhammad was a selfless man. He gave his entire life for and worked hard as a soldier. As a, you, can't, you can't really even describe the type of will and tenacity he had when it came to trying to be the best leader he could be for uh, those of you that accepted him as your imam. You know, that's who he was living for and working for. And there was nothing, nothing that could change his mind, his heart, anything. And to hear that he got his beginning uh, feeling a part of a community, community life. See, a baby's in the womb of the mother with his eyes closed. He don't see nothing. He knows himself as an individual. He may know his mother, may not know, we, we don't know. But it's not until he gets up and can stand up and look, you know, I don't even think they're too aware of the community when they were crawling around. But it's when they can stand up and they can see their family and know that, hey, I'm just like these people walking around here. And I think Imam Muhammad got his awareness uh, at Savior's Day. He said, but Savior's Day is not the Savior's Day many of us remember. That uh, Malcolm X and all of the big leaders and all of the beautiful African American people with their black pride and beautiful dress and beautiful outfits on. Imam Muhammad remembers the community coming together and sharing meals together. He said a red delicious apple and I think they ate sweet potato pie or something like that. And I don't know if y'all saw it, but the way he expressed it, it almost looked like he was uh, going back to that moment, you know? And then he looked just as so, as so much at peace and identified with it so freely, you know? We all Muslims, one. But everybody has a beginning. And everybody's beginning is their own. It's their own. So for us to say we're Muslims in America in this day and time and not appreciate Savior's Day is to say you don't appreciate what Allah gave you exclusively as your own. Savior's Day belongs to us. It's up. Now what we want to call it or make it, what you feel about it in your heart, we can talk about that all day long. But uh, we were lost. More than lost. We were, we were snatched away and destroyed. Taken away from the human family. Yeah. And, and we were saved. And we were saved. That's a fact. Undeniable. Allah saved us. Because who do we belong to? We belong to Allah. Imam Muhammad referred to it as the sacred property, the invulnerable property of, of uh, that's not to be touched by anyone other than Allah, the human soul. That was the attempt. This is the reason why we get disrespect from many of the races, because they believe in their weak mind, just as they believe that in cloning, they can clone the human soul. And somehow say, they say, we need a new nigga. <laughs> now, we're going to clone us some. They believe that we belong to them because they created us. No, you bred us. You tr attempted to breed us, but what came out of the womb, that was Allah's doing. What was formed in the womb, what was conceived in the womb, that was Allah. You had nothing to do with it. And even to this day, the scientists struggle uh, to try to see what is going on there. They have no idea what's going on in there. As a, Allah has a veil there that they can't cross. He, they can't do it. We don't belong to them. We don't belong to them. So alhamdulillah. So we have to keep appreciating our own. I don't know what time it is. And I don't want to keep going. But I want us to continue this program. And I know we got some pioneers here that can share some experiences with us. But let's not get spooky. And let's not listen to those very, those weak, slimy, low-life people that have been working so, so hard for so many years to try to defeat. I'm a human being, but if I got a lot help, can you defeat me? You can't mess with me. And I'm not bragging. He already said he ain't bragging. But if, if I was to start bragging about the mercy and the power that I felt Allah has given me, they can't touch me. They cannot affect me in any way. I don't care if they had to fire 10 nuclear bombs. It would not even make me warm. Alhamdulillah. They can't touch us. Alhamdulillah. They can keep trying. I, 
I'm sometimes I'm amused by it. That's the human intellect, and you can do that too. If you can, if you know the weakness of your enemy and how weak and slimy he is, if you want to show him mercy, you let him know and say, "Don't go there." But if you want to see a lot of torment is behind and punish him, you let him watch him go there. You just step aside, and that's what I do. Because they deserve the punishment that they get, alhamdulillah. But Allah is merciful, alhamdulillah. I appreciate y'all having a little fun. But we got to stay on point. That's the, that's the main thing. Remember Allah. Allah accepts only good. Allah wants only good. He wants peace and happiness for us. He wants us to live out our full potential as human beings. And if you want that too, you, you got it coming. Alhamdulillah. Allahu Thank you, President of Mosque Cares, Martin II. Alhamdulillah. Isn't this beautiful? How you